Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this fifth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on Drupal Commerce, I want to introduce you to how we can create some coupons. Um, you'll notice that I've been away for a while. Uh, I apologize for that, but hopefully we can dive back into this series uh, and get it completed in no time. Before we do that, I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series, this one excluded because it's not done. Uh, and each sale goes to help me continue to develop these video tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent, uh, more so than I've been doing lately. Um, but if you don't have the money and you do want to help back, please just give me a thumbs up, leave a comment on YouTube, let me know that these video tutorials are helping you. I really appreciate that. I know I've been a bit lacking, uh, I've been a bit busy recently, but I'd like to get back into these. Uh, and it's always good to hear from people um, on how these video tutorials are helping them. So that said, uh, let's get back into our series. I'm over at localhost slash commerce. Uh, this is the site we've been working on. And in the previous video tutorial, we created uh, the opportunity to pay for orders. Now what we want to do is provide some discounts to our users, uh, you know, to help retract or attract them, keep them engaged, uh, and provide a little bit of benefit for making purchases on our site. So in order to do that, we're going to go to drupal.org slash project slash commerce coupon, and we're going to download the commerce coupon module. Uh, at the time of recording this, the stable version is 7.x uh, 1.0 beta 7. I recommend getting that because we're going to use two other modules to create fixed price coupons and percentage coupons. Uh, those two modules do depend on 7.x 1.0, uh, and they take a lot of the kind of background work of rules uh, and do it automatically for us uh, right away. And you'll see why that's beneficial as we walk through this. So go ahead and grab that. You'll notice I've already done it uh, using Drush, and so I've downloaded the modules. And then uh, you also need entity reference. You'll see it's a dependency when you get commerce coupons. So go ahead and grab that as well. If you're using Drush, that should be handled automatically for you. Uh, and if you go over to modules, we can just go to commerce coupon. You'll see that I've got commerce coupon fixed amount enabled, commerce coupon percentage amount enabled, commerce coupon UI, commerce coupon. And then the other one, as I mentioned, is entity reference. And you'll see it's right here. And that was really loud. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, got my windows open. It's springtime here. Well, soon to be summer. Um, let's head over to our store here. And now you'll see when I hover over store, I've got coupons and I've got the ability to set these up. So if I click on coupon types, this is just exactly like different node types. Coupons are actually entities with commerce coupon, uh, which is nice because it then uses the whole entity mechanics, which we've been talking about up until now in this video tutorial series. And so you can have these, these fixed coupons. This is actually a bundle uh, in Drupal lingo uh, entity speak. And so is the percentage coupon. It is a bundle. So it's kind of an instance of a commerce coupon. And as a result, it can be customized. So when we look at fixed coupon amount, we can go manage the fields. You can see it's got a fixed amount, coupon code, and maximum number of uses. And if I go to percentage coupon, I go manage field, you'll see coupon uh, code, maximum number of uses, percentage amount. And if I wanted to add my own coupon type, I can just go, uh, let's just go test, whatever it is. Uh, let's save and add some fields. You'll see that these two fields are required for or automatic to uh, coupons. It makes sense because you want to have the maximum number of use and coupon code, but then you can apply whatever other field you want to it. Uh, I don't know, maybe you wanted to put it, I don't know, I can't even think of others because we've got percentage, we've got fixed term. But when you wanted to do it, you can obviously do it here and then uh, it'll be enabled when you go to create that coupon type, that coupon rather. So let's go back over to coupons. Now that we've got um, coupon types, you'll notice that I've gone ahead and I've created two different coupons here. And all I did was go create a coupon and I can create fixed coupon. And then you just enter the amount that you want to apply for that coupon. So I had entered $5. My coupon code was whatever I wanted. So I think it was $5 off or something like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be all caps. That's just something I do. Um, and then I set the max number of use for one and set it as active. And then I created a percentage coupon, exact same thing, maximum number of uses, percentage amount, just put in 25 and gave it a code. Uh, and that's how I came to have these two different coupons here. So that's how you create them. Uh, next thing you're going to want to check out is if you go to store, you go to configuration, you go to checkout, here are all the different panes that a user is going to go through. And so a pane is thought, you can think of it as in terms of like a field set, right? So different information that you are going to enter. So We've seen this before when we go to checkout. Let's go to localhost slash commerce. Um, and let's go ahead and we'll add this to our cart. Oops, I wanted a private browser. Turns out I'm already private browsing. 
So I think if I go control N, yeah, local host slash commerce. And I can look at this t-shirt and I can add red to the cart. Here's my cart. We can not check out because we're anonymous. So this is just becoming a disaster. We'll come back to that. Um, but what ends up happening is you can move this coupon pane to different stages, right? So right now it's in the checkout. As soon as we go to checkout, we'll have the ability to enter it. Once we have a review order, you could add it there and, and so on. Um, the last thing and probably the most important thing is how are these coupons actually applied? Now, like most um, different add-ons or different pieces to commerce, uh, commerce coupon relies on rules. Uh, and the reason why that is great is because you can do a whole bunch of functionality without having to write a single piece of code. Um, you know, maybe if you're a programmer, you don't like that idea, but if you're not, chances are you're not, um, you'd like the ability to use this UI to create uh, different commerce coupons. And so you'll see we've got a number of different uh, rules that are related to coupons. Uh, validated coupon actually comes from commerce coupon. And so that's a rule that's created. Same as after removing a product from the cart, it will remove the, the coupon. But then redeem a coupon with the fixed amount. This is actually created by that module that we downloaded. So that's why I recommended you get the, the 7.x 1.0 version of commerce coupon because the module uh, for fixed amount applies to that and creates this rule. And the rule is a little bit complex. So let's take a look at it. You see it reacts to redeem a coupon. So if you were creating this on your own, you didn't want to use percentage coupon or fixed price coupon, you know, maybe you're using the 2.0 version of commerce coupon, you're going to re react to redeem a coupon. And then you're going to enter all the conditions that you want to add. Again, uh, the module we downloaded does this all for us. And you'll see here, uh, you know, it's checking the commerce coupon type to make sure it's fixed coupon. Then it's checking that it has the uh, the amount, that there's an amount applied to it, so it knows what to do. And then it's going through a bunch of other things to check. You know, it, does the entity have a certain field? Uh, you know, that's, is it referencing an order? Uh, is it not empty? And then, um, you know, do we have a, a price? Uh, and is the coupon active and, and those kind of things. I don't know, this might not even be price, it could be lying to you. But regardless, it's checking all the conditions and it's doing that for you. That's the big key thing. In terms of actions, what it's then doing is it's adding its commerce coupon to a list uh, and that's of commerce coupons that are applied to it. And then it's going ahead and creating a line item and that line item actually has a price associated with it. And then that's how you get the, the negative $5 or whatever you set your amount to. And so all that's handled for you right out of the box. You don't have to touch that. It's good to go, you have fixed price coupons. Same thing for percentage amount. You can check, it's gonna, same thing, redeem a coupon, it's gonna go through all the same checks, and then it's gonna add an item to a list. You'll notice that it itself does not do the actual uh, apply the discount. That's a separate rule. And the reason for that is because when it does this, it's, it's actually reacting to calculate the sell price. So the previous one was redeem a coupon. This one actually has to affect the price of an order, uh, or rather a product, and so it has to react to a different event. And then down here, you'll see it actually creates a loop, goes through all the different products and applies that percentage discount to it. So a little bit complex. You don't want to go through that. You can grab these two modules, enable them, and you're good to go. Um, that's the extent, really, of applying these coupons. Now, when we go back to the home, um, let's grab a T-shirt. Let's go ahead and add that to the cart. Go to our cart. We can go check out. You'll see here, as I was talking about, here's the pane for coupons. So I can just go five, I don't know, what is it, like $5 off or something like that? I guess I should confirm that. So $5. Uh, we've got all our stuff there. We can add the coupon. And when you add it, you see it generates the $5 amount up here. Fixed coupon, $5 off. Uh, and I can do 25, what did I create the other one? 25% off add the coupon and you'll see that also applies 25% off to the same order. Same thing, percentage coupon just happens to work out the exact same way. Um, and the reason why I can apply both coupons is because I haven't set a rule to say you can only apply one, right? Um, that's something that you can do on your own. So uh, if I continue to the next step, you'll see I've got all the same information. Go ahead. I can complete the order. Uh, if I wanted to, remember we were talking about those panes, you can go to configuration, check out settings. Uh, rather than have coupons there, I can have it in the review of the order. Let's save that configuration. Let's go back to our home page. I'm going to check my shopping cart. I'm going to go to checkout. You'll notice now I don't have the coupon pane down here. I've got shopping cart. I've got billing. I can continue. And when I continue, there's my coupon code. And I can see all the coupons that I've applied. I can see my shopping cart. And then I can see my account information and my credit card payment information. So that's all there is to coupons. Uh, they're pretty straightforward, easy to use. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, alternatively, if this video tutorial did help you, please give it a thumbs up and let me know. Again, I always appreciate that feedback. Hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial and it won't be as long between this and tutorial number six. Thanks very much for watching.